actually provides us a perfect lead-in for our next panelist. Uh, Biff is, uh, has uh, been doing uh, his work for a couple of decades, uh, you know, built on um, uh, mainframe platforms as well as a bunch of different services. Uh, it's been a lot of fun talking with Biff because he's been spending some time on leading edge disaster recovery stuff that I think you guys will enjoy. So he's going to play the surrogate of kind of the denominator in my fraction in terms of technology change. Welcome back, please. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, everyone. We all do the same thing, right? There we go. So I am what kind of Arnold said, uh, is these, uh, these service providers, right? I'm one of these service providers that uh, helps uh, either IT organizations or, uh, or business units looking to uh, empower certain models or applications or, or other things to the cloud or, or disaster recovery uh, programs. So in my daily uh, and, and you know, many uh, years of uh, I've worked with many different organizations to understand what are those business problems, what are those drivers that they're trying to do, uh, and and I'm kind of you know, give, giving some uh, a framework around kind of what we call the cloud, and I, I agree with with Arnold that the cloud is a how do you want to procure and manage in IT. It's not a technology; it's the same technologies that everybody's using in house today. Um, so. You know, when I typically talk with people, and, and, and I, I brought some cheat sheets up here because uh, the, I want to tie some things together from some of the previous uh, speakers. You know, one of the things that I always you know try to get people to understand is this: this is first a, a long term. What is that roadmap? What is this horizon that you're going to look at and say, this is the outcome that I need for my organization? Is it two years from now? Is it ten years? As we heard from Sam. Uh, and, and he probably started five years before the 10-year number. So it's probably a 15-year horizon that he's working on to turn a nation. Uh, and you know, is it, is it uh, you know, we've heard from uh, Lydia at, um, uh, at, at Cook County. I mean, she's already six weeks into, first thing, what's her five-year plan look like, mm -hmm. right? She has to understand what are, what are those plans, and in your organization, what do those look like from what the outcomes are you want for your organization, and how do you want things to work and at what time horizon can you make that happen? And, and the reason I bring that up is, is you know, we, and this is budget season, right, for a lot of people. Maybe others, maybe a little, few more months if you're on a, um, a, a different calendar year, a, a different calendar year. But what happens to most budgets? People pull up last year's and they look backwards. Every time they start looking backwards. You can't get forward if you look backwards. You have to know what this horizon is. And, and this is the first step I do when I work with people. I say, if you really want to change the game, where do you want to be in three to five years? And then now look back at what your budget said that you were going to do this year. How does that get you there? Guess what? You're going to start making hard decisions quick. Um, because if you truly need to be different in a different spot than you are, you're going to have to make those changes. And if you take that time horizon and you go instead of one year, you still look at three years, or you're looking at five years, your investment decisions are going to change because you're going to ask yourself, if I spend money on this this year again, does it get me any further to my goal? If it doesn't, cross it off. Figure a different way. Because if you don't, five years from now, you'll be in the same spot. So it's very critical that you have that plan, you think that way, and you really take that long-term planning and you push it down to the budget process. Then, you know, as you as you get to your plans, the other part of you know looking at things is vetting what's logical versus what's uh, you know what is possible. There's lots of things that are possible to move to the cloud. There's lots of things that are very illogical to move to the cloud. Uh, so again, it, you know, there is a there, there, there's there's you know just because it sounds great or you, it sounds like you want to do it. You always have to still rationalize the business case. Uh, is it is it make more sense? Is it better, faster, cheaper? Does is it give you the goals? Is it hitting the outline or the, the objective you're going for? Make sure you have a cross-functional team, a cross-organizational team, and here's why: if it doesn't get adopted, it's wasted. If you don't have this new process or a new way of doing things that you see three to five years out, and if you don't have people bought in across your organization across the constituents outside the organization, if they're not a part of that process, then you end up fighting a hurdle at each and every venue because it's change. 
People are not geared to say, I want to embrace change. I want to learn a new way of doing something that I've done for the last five years. You know, and I want to spend the time to do that. So you have to make sure you've, you've got that buy-in. And, and also, with all those different views, you're going to learn things that hopefully you'll, you'll make corrections before it gets before you get all the way to the end result. So those corrections you'll, you'll make uh, will help you with a better product or a it's a, for me, it's a, a perfect outcome, right? You're looking for what's, you know, don't accept mediocrity. Make sure that what you're doing is really going to be well liked and it's going to be the right thing. You know, if you, you know, understanding now versus the future. You know, think about, you know, 10 years ago what cell phones look like. Think of what they're, think about the adoption of cell phones and, and how people are now, you know, with uh, what Sam said, the, 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 now the electronic wallet or the mobile wallet. That's how people are going to pay for things. Credit cards, watch out. You might not need a credit card if you have a cell phone in a few years. Uh, you're going to pay with your, credit, with your cell phone. Um, so think about this adoption. And, and what's great about cell phones is that they are something that uh, has been adopted so readily and, uh, and it's very you know, easy to spread. I mean, you, you heard, you know, maybe you don't have three PCs at home, but you might have three cell phones. Well, every person seems to have one. And, and, it, and it goes globally, uh, they're very widespread. So how is that cell phone technology gonna continue? And by the way, they you know, know where you're at at every moment too, because they can track you. Uh, so think about, again, how is that future gonna look like for your five-year time horizon? Because maybe you're thinking, wow, here's my five years where I gotta be, and guess what, when you get there, are you still two years behind? So again, you have to, you have to inject that future, how is the world changing, and where do you wanna be, and, Maybe you want to say, in five years, I want to be where I should think I should be in, in seven years or ten years. Um, there are lots of great jobs available. <laughs> <laughs> the other, see, there's the cell phone. Uh, so, you know, the other thing I usually say is, okay, let's say you want to jump onto this cloud, right? You want to jump onto this bandwagon. Start small, but start mighty. Find some application that spans your entire organization. Email. Know, a web portal that everybody has to you know, go to, or intranet, you know, start with something that everybody, that touches as many people as possible in your organization, and move that to a cloud. Uh, move that to, and, and learn how all of that interaction it changes. Understand what does it mean now if, you, if somebody needs to add a new employee to that system. Uh, understand if you, if you need assistance with that. But also everybody who is in your organization is now getting used to that change that they had to occur um, and, and how that fate, how that uh, affects them. And then a repeat, you're gonna learn a lot of lessons, you're gonna use a, an application or, or a uh, function that's pervasive across the organization, you're gonna find a lot of stumbling points along the way, make note of those, and then when you get to the mission critical, oh my God, I, I, we can't mess this one up, you'll already have had that uh, experience. Now, from, from a technology management standpoint, you know, what I usually tell people is, First, you don't know what you don't know, and we've heard a little bit of that with, uh, you know, you know, if you think of, I think of Lydia's organization at Cook County. We're talking mainframes and mid-range and physical servers. How many of those folks know virtualization and cloud-enabling technologies that she has on staff? That's why she's hired, right? Uh, and and so when you don't know what you don't know, make sure you go get some expertise. You don't have to be the expert in executing it, but you have to understand how it works what's possible and what isn't, and enough to really grasp the possibilities for your organization. And that may be bringing in a, a consultant who can help you with that. Um, you know, classify your IT resources. So, you know, as, as um, you know, Arnold said, um, you know, he mentioned kind of help desk or, you know, I'm out there configuring the router, right? Well, I, I usually ask people, is there only, you know, how many best practice ways are there to patch an operating system? Well, there's one, and it's defined by the you know Microsoft or whatever operating system is you're using. If you want to be an expert, where there's one best practice on how to do it, it's probably not the best use of your people's time. You probably want to have them focused on the really value-added knowledge of understanding and being more business more business analysts. What is it that we can do to help create more revenue in your organization, make it more efficient? Uh, what is it that we can do to, uh, you know, really drive change and, and make it more efficient to serve our constituents and close that gap that, uh, you know, that uh, Tony was talking about in the in the budget gap. You know, how do you get that done? 
that's not configuring routers. That there's, there's other places that can do that, do it probably faster and more efficient than, than your team can. Um, but you need to classify those and you need to understand, again, do you wanna be the, do you wanna be the HVAC expert? Or do you wanna have a place that takes care of power and cooling, right? Um, so the, uh, the, the other thing I typically uh, will tell people is if you're gonna jump on to working with a service provider like someone you know, like we do, Get, make sure you have a responsibilities matrix that you're developing before you sign the contract. Know exactly if this is the service you're going to provide. Let's take if it's hosted email. Who's taking care of the manages manage, uh, the, 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 um, the the moves, ads, and changes? Who's taking care of uh, uh, telling someone well that this person's been terminated? They have to be turned off the, the system. Who's actually patching the system? You know, so just take any service you're talking about, and there has to be some level of a matrix put together that knows what is your responsibility, and what is that provider's, and what are the SLAs. If you tell them to do something, how long will that take to get done, and, and where's a closed loop process where you, where you really can see that. Um, and then, uh, you know, as the last kind of slide I have is, uh, is, is trying to you know, tie together, when we talk about communities, and we talk about know the, the responsibilities we have with, with a community and, and, and time it into municipalities and government government services you know I, I like to talk about what we call burstable disaster recovery as a kind of an agent of change or transformation that will take you into cloud as well so think about a disaster it, it affects your community it affects everyone in that ecosystem of community uh, you've got the, the government itself the businesses within that system the, the employees that work for those businesses whether it's just a single business or, or it's more impactful like a Hurricane Katrina. Uh, and, and you also have the residents who then are in that area. Um, you know, think about not being able to provide or have your services up or be able to communicate with your uh, residents as a municipality. And we had storms come through this summer that knocked out about uh, some, they were probably about uh, you know, a week and a half without power. I mean, there were some municipalities that were down for a week. Um, recently, we've had a, a, a cyber attack on one of our local municipalities, and you know they have been taken down with uh, viruses infecting their systems uh, for for you know, almost a week. I mean, these are the things that are out there that are you know coming at, at, at municipalities and local government that they have to deal with and face with. So how do we, you know, how do we make sure that we have some stabilization and return to normalcy because that's what businesses want in your in your uh, districts. That's one. The residents want and the employees want. Uh, I'm, I am very passionate about this topic because to me it's one of the one things that if I can help somebody through uh, planning for and preparing for this type of an event, then it saves jobs, uh, it saves businesses, it helps communities. Uh, it, it's something that's very, I, I would call it, mitigates the adverse effect. And unfortunately with Mother Nature lately, it, ain't been, it hasn't been pleasant in the last few years of what, uh, what she's thrown at us. So. Um, now, how does that tie back to a transformation to cloud computing? Well, um, one of the uh, ways you can use uh, cloud is through a, more of a disaster recovery type model. And I can tell you, it's a great low cost way to uh, find out, uh, are your applications ready for cloud? Uh, are your employees ready for learning how to access their applications running out of the cloud? Uh, and you kind of have a no risk systems test by bringing your applications in and recovering them into a more of a cloud-like environment or a, a you know, off-site uh, you know, managed environment where you're only paying for those uh, that time you're using that system. Uh, and so it really kind of matches the cost of the, having that disaster to the, to, to the time of need to then also taking back to your property and casualty insurance and claiming dollars on that. So it's a great little model uh, to be able to help you with disaster recovery Paying those costs on insurance and also have a test drive of bringing your applications to the cloud. Um, and it really kind of go ties into your dirty duty to protect and preserve data as a government, to be able to tell people, yes, you paid your taxes or, or no, you haven't. Uh, all those pieces of data that, uh, that need to be protected. Um, and, and again, uh, it gives you, a, higher, it gives you a, a, a way to do that and a test drive to moving your applications to the cloud. So, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so um, there you have kind of the, uh, the uh, that's why I'm confused. 
Um, so there you have. So we've talked a little bit about um, ideation. We've talked a little bit about the implementation piece. How does that culture happen? And then the technology underpinnings. So I want to take a couple minutes now and tee up a couple questions for the panelists. But first, let me just ask if there's a, a question from the audience. If there is, I'd be happy to take that. Yes, please. I dare not date myself. But <laughs> I, I'm getting ready to. And then panelists, I've only been you guys want to get experience. But um, I, I'm just curious with the urgency that you described in just discovery as well as the transformation we're always going through and what you're talking about RP has to get to. How similar is it to the urgency of Y2K phenomenon <coughs> at that time where company caps, where companies were, I was in the midst of it at that time in the insurance industry, where companies you know, felt it was life or death. What is the urgency of the pendulum right now in terms of this notion of IT transformation that has to take place with all that we've been talking about? Thank you. So the question is kind of along the lines of what's the punctuation point? What's the what's the, what's the moment of urgency? So uh, looking for a volunteer here. I'll start, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would say that uh, the, the one thing with Y2K had is it, every business leader in management was scared, right? They didn't know what was going to happen, and they had an impending date, and everybody had to be on the same page, right? So there there was this deadline that everybody had to hit, and and of course. There was, uh, in, in any market, you usually have market leaders that, that are making moves first, and you have market followers. Well, at that point, everybody was moving forward to, to that certain path to get things done. And the sense of urgency was much greater, I think. Than, and today, I think the transformation, um, you know, and one of the things I you know, sometimes talk about was inflection points, right? There's, there's certain inflection points in every company, and, and the IT, and the infrastructure they have, um, and, and really, that really should drive a lot of when you make your decisions. If you know your systems and your, in, and your technologies are going to be outdated in two years, the time to think about what you're going to do about that is in two years from now. It's a one year before that happens, uh, maybe even more. It might be, eight, you know, again, depending upon the size of the organization and how hard it is to turn that shift. So I think that's, that's something that, you know, if you go back and say, Look at what I have today. When is it going to be obsolete? Uh, and then can I at least start backing into when I have to start making uh, decisions? And then how long does it take me to gather the right research to even start having a, con a conversation about that decision? In, in terms of, um, it, there's, there's two different things here. Like Y2K, that was obviously urgent. But I'm not sure if IT transformation is urgent just yet. Because you know, it, the most IT organizations aren't aligned with the business. So I mean, Kip County's been around forever. I mean, we're still talking about major transformation. Um, you know, RTA has been around since seventy, well, eighty-three actually, um, and we're having some of the similar conversations. So I'm, and until we figure out how to align IT with the business value, so that it's it's. Um, it's as urgent as generating revenue. Um, it, it, we may not feel the urgency. Now it is urgent to, I, to CIOs, to some CIOs, um, but until it's completely aligned with the business, I'm not sure if we're gonna uh, achieve the urgency that we need to make the major changes. I think that, I think that what all IT organizations better be careful about is that everybody's going to get just become self-service. They're going to figure out how to yeah. get, out, get by without you and they'll leapfrog past you and we'll realize pretty soon that, you know what, we don't need an IT organization anymore. Because everybody's got a smartphone, everybody knows how to use their own computer, and smartphones are becoming computers and with the apps on it, there's an app for everything, I swear to God. <laughs> so I, I think that it's, it's not something that business leaders are necessarily going to say, okay, well, I'm going to make a huge investment in IT this year. What, what's happening is that individual workers and employees are sick and tired of waiting around for IT to solve their problems when they can just solve them themselves. And bring your own device to work is a huge trend. Yeah, great question. I think the uh, curve we saw before the economic divergence uh, is definitely one of the, one of the key things that, you know, uh, governments are feeling an incredible amount of urgency. The thing I've seen on some of the private side clients I've been working with also is the carry-in devices are creating a crisis. 
Uh, in some cases, the informal systems are as powerful as the formal systems. And you know, pretty doc well documented examples where um, a lot of what would be considered intellectual property is being carried outside the organization right now, uh, which is a, a big concern. Great, thank you for that question. Anybody else have a couple questions that you address? I want to make sure that everybody goes home with those three to five takeaways. So, uh, Maria, let, let me throw one your way. If you were uh, sourcing a team, if you were advising one of these folks on how to pick a team <laughs> to do some good ideation, what's what's your top of mind? One or two things that you think about. Um, so, so one of the things I was reacting to that I think um, Beth said was to have a cross-functional team. Yeah. So. Uh, I just went through a really good class uh, at work, um, and it, it opened a lot of eyes to me. I've been in the industry for over 31 years, and I thought I knew everything. Um, especially on creativity teams, you want to have real diverse experience and perspective. But um, one of the things that I see happening in organizations everywhere is that you can't, it's not on? Okay, no, not yet, I'm sorry. What I see happening in organizations everywhere is nobody has direct authority, but they're responsible and accountable for managing these projects where people report into somebody else and their performance is measured by somebody else, and they have these kind of matrixed projects across organizations, sometimes across sites, and in this case, at this conference, you've got people that are in Cook County, you know, people that are in the RTA, and it's an RTA-sponsored project, so, you know, our, you get, you get assigned it, right? But he has no authority over the people that, that he needs to get to change the way they do things or uh, do work for him um, in another part of the, the county um, or another municipality. And so uh, I think one of the things you really need to understand is the with them, what's in it for them, and everybody on your team. And you need to have that cross-functional team and you need to ask the hard questions up front of, what's in it for each individual on your team, but also what's in it for each of their organizations, what's the return on investment, and what are the metrics that you need to define so that everybody wins in the end. Um, and you may have to scale back your initial goals for the system because you, they may be lopsided, and in order to get engagement from as many different uh, factions and perspectives as possible, come out with the best solution faster and get it in play faster so that you can learn really quickly, like Praveen was talking about, what the mistakes are, and then roll a new rev out. That, that's what I would answer that question with, which may not be what you expected, but. <laughs> no, that's, that's why I asked you, your subject matter expert. Uh, let me throw one to the operations guys. Um, so what's the, you know, we, we talked about staring into the past and, and then turning around looking at the future. What's the artifact that you see operational folks clinging to the hardest that they need to let go of right now to kind of embrace that new future? If you had to pick one or maybe two things, what, what, do, you, what do you see people clinging to uh, that they really just need to let go of? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Well, artifact. Hmm. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's a, a physical artifact that people cling to in, in, in terms of like cultural Processes, things. Processes, culture, yep. Uh, well, I mean, all of what we're talking about I mean, technology, in my opinion, is easy. It's people. Um, people are most of the problems. I mean, not to speak about Cook County, but I mean, they have union issues and um, and you know workflow problems and you know people who have been doing the same thing for a long time. It's mostly about people and trying to figure out how to how to modify. Uh, and and at the, actually, at the end of the day, people do what they're incentivized to do. So if you don't change the incentive programs um, that drive the behaviors that you're looking for, change is tough. So uh, I don't know if I answered your question. No, no, that's a really, it, the deeply embedded patterns are very, very different. Going on. And, and I'm going to kind of follow on what he's saying. And I think if you're going to, you know, what, what happens is you come to somebody and say, you're, you're not going to do, you're not going to patch servers anymore. Well, what does it immediately do? They go, oh my God, what am I going to do? That's my job. I've done that for you know the last five years. That's you know I come in and you know this is the things I work on. Before you start telling people that they're not going to do things, make sure you tell them what they're going to do, and then give them the training to do that, and motivate them and be positive. You want to go to the positive side first. Hey, we'd like you to go to this training. We'd like you to learn about X, Y, and Z technology because we'd like you to take this on 
and, and be the be you know our, our leader in this area. And then when they say, well, that sounds really exciting, but who's going to patch the servers? Well, we got somebody else to do that for you. Oh wow, you did that for me. I can. It's a way that you approach it, and and make sure though that you give the person a new leap, a new charge, and give them the training to do it and be successful. Thank you. Good runway level advice. Please. On. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. From a from an end user perspective, and, and I'm trying to stay focused on the innovation. As a user of your services, okay, which is trains, right? And I know they're getting faster and all the things that Barack is trying to you know, speak about. So how when you look at IT and innovation? Is there an impact on on me as a user from some of the things that that occurs in the IT group? Well, I mean, it, as, a, as it relates to intermodal travel, mm -hmm. um, you have uh, governor, um, our governor has passed uh, legislation for, um, you know, for the regional transit authorities uh, and the service board CTA management pays by 2015, we have to have an open fair payment system. Okay. Uh, which, re which basically, and this is what we were doing in the 90s, the smart cards at Motorola, we just were using a Motorola big, two big hat on at that time. But um, so that in itself is, is rooted in technology, you know, okay. finding, um, you know, fair media, a form of fair media that, that's uh, the electronic equivalent of cash, figuring out how to do offline secure transactions uh, as relate to contactless, um, uh, you know, fair transactions. Uh, that's just one okay. example. Uh, but there's there's tons, you okay. know, tons of examples. But that's probably one of the big ones that that's. Do you a have an app for that? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> we still have paper tickets, right? No, if you if you've ridden a metro train lately, yeah. you yeah. see that they still take cash, right? Yes. Yes. Metro is way behind, yeah. and and that's and the, their business model, the way they're structured, is that they're they're built from multiple contract. They they don't own all their rail. They don't own all their trains. So trying to figure out all of these different businesses that make up Metra and, and figuring out how to get them to even communicate, um, they, 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 I think they're still doing paper for their financials. Mm -hmm. um, they don't even have, they, you know, they're gonna go for an ERP solution uh, in the future, but today they, they're, it's paper and pen and ledgers. Yeah, thank you very much. It, it's, it's amazing when you get down, down to the runway level, yeah. the amount of silos and partitioning you really have to work with. Hey, I want to thank everybody for the energy level. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and draw the panel to a close here. Uh, but, but you guys have been fantastic. I realize this has been a, been a, been a later panel and, and much appreciated. I also want to thank the panelists. They worked hard over the weekend putting this stuff together. So. Warriors, <laughs> we, uh, we'd like to thank uh, Mr. Prop, Mr. Carter, Mr. Meyer, and Ms. Thompson for having a very energetic and informative and practical, not only strategic, but tactical panel. Thank you so much. I'd like to invite Poonam Gupta Krishnan to come to the podium to present our certificates of appreciation to our fantastic panelists.
Chicago Technology Innovation Summit 2012 for Economic Renewal. We know you had an excellent and enlightening experience today. There were a lot of strategic but also tactical things and concepts that were covered today. The key is, please leave here and make something happen. We'd like to also acknowledge and thank our distinguished panelists, speakers, Northern Trust, Oracle, Data Link, IIT, Media Partner, and uh, I'd like to most importantly thank the Brain Trust, and boy, she's got a lot of brains, for putting this event together. It takes a risk. It takes something to get out there on the shaky branch and do this. So we appreciate your support, and I'd like to ask for a round of applause for you.
And thank you, everybody. This is our event. I think I'm loud enough. Right? This is our event, and this is not the day that you want. The, the whole idea behind it, how we can collaborate in heart, in action, in planning, to bring about changes instead of saying the government should create a job. Who is government? We are. We are the democracy and we are the government. And that's what we would like to know. Um, I was asked to, to do this closing with a follow-up. The follow-up is we want to hear from you guys. Go on to LinkedIn and share the thought. What do you want to see in 12 months when we reconvene next year? And let's bring it your event to you. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Peter will be balancing parking if you have it, and uh, we'd love to invite you to another party. Punam and I are speaking at the power of cross cultural collaboration on Thursday night, so come party with us out in Hawkins the States. Uh, where, do we have the flyers? We have plenty of flyers, yes. And we are there? Okay, good. Are there flyers here? Where's the party, Kathy? Hoffman Estates, the Meadows Club. <laughs> Five to two. Thank you very much. Oh, one more thing. Just one more thing. Last thing, we have some books and the authors. So if you are really keen on talking to them and getting hands on the authors, they are here to talk and they are here to sign the book for you. And that will be good. We're not just handing out, uh, it's only for our I ran out of my car. I'm running out of cards. I know. Oh, I Martin? Yes, that's right. I'm ran out of cards, so uh, you can't you have one. I, what do you know? What do you do? Oh, you're pizza salty. Okay. Oh, really? In agile and PMP, yeah. mostly agile. Yeah. Oh, agile. 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 And it's not so much yours, and it's not your agile. Everybody's chasing agile. Okay, thank you. You're already done. My apologies for being my apologies. You're welcome. You always need to. All my boards are in this I email you never email me back. Mark is the most talking Irish person. You turned out okay. I'll leave my car with you. I'll pick you up. See, there's cars on the wall. I know, I know, but it's still. Yep, you have a pen for the wall. You have a pen. A bunch of us are going to be there aren't satisfied whatsoever. I shall, I shall, shall, shall. I've got two speakers. Okay, one, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Thank you.
I think the I think the euro. I believe. I believe. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Is there a speaker all right, very good. One, two, three. Thank you. Okay, one, two, three. Look here. This is a camera. That's a video. <laughs> one more. Thank you. Video goes everywhere, right? <laughs> Lovely. Close. One more. Okay. I'm good with that. We've tested it. I'm, I'm so proud of you. This was awesome. awesome. I didn't come to all that. I didn't say that. Yeah. Wow. All those stuff. It's later in the afternoon. Yeah. 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 But I talked to Stan. Yeah. He told me about it. He came to Zero Sense of Money. He said it was amazing. So, uh, great job. Uh, together, and then you guys can have one. Okay. One, two, three. I'm going to step no, out. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you want to get some? No, we just want your name tag so we can, um, you do want so we can name tag. Identify. 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 Okay. Identify. Oh, Identify. I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. You'll know. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One, two, three. Thank you. Two, three. Yeah. I am in there. Yeah. I want okay, it. Look up here. Look here. Okay, we well, look at where? Here? Look here. One, two, three. Good. Okay. okay. I want a picture with you. Yeah. And take your tag off. Okay. There you go. Good. Thank you. Yeah, I'll take some. Human pictures, corn hair, you know, I didn't want to make sure that I, I do things right. Yeah, yeah, and I, she's I, really good on that. Okay. She gave yeah. me one of the earliest interviews years ago. Oh, your knees. Cute. This, look here, one, two, three. Good. Thank you. I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Amy, you're going to fix this. Amy, can you scratch it? No, because it's outside. I didn't Velcro the neck. Okay. One, two, three. Good. Okay. Can't be, can't be. Yes, not. Than